So Black Sabre Jr. Um, he says, with how great the uh, – he said, first hope, y'all in the social suplex, people are doing well. Uh, with how great the Continental Classic, a.k.a. the AEW Championship Carnival has been, any improvements would you like to see from it going into next year? I got to say. Uh, Go ahead, James. Oh, I was going to say, like, I think they should do a better job, like, um, playing their promos uh, post-match during the shows if they can. Um, like, I, I remember when um, after – AEW, the first one, 2019, uh, all or double or nothing um, aired, and they did, you know, they had Moxley, you know, after he laid out Jericho in Omega, they had this promo where he walked to the back and then he just went off, right? And that's kind of in the, been in the vein of a lot of his, of a number of his promos over the years. And I thought that, like, it worked really well of, like, this is, you're catching a, a glimpse of reality in, of reality in quotation marks around it, of, like, of the character post whatever he, the, the experience was in the ring or at ringside or all around or in glass or in hell in the case of Moxley. <laughs> and um, I, I think that like some of these promos that he's done um, and a lot of wrestlers have done, it makes me think of those like when they're in the back and they're basically like, you know, kind of licking their wounds post match and they're, you know, coming off the, the, the thrill of winning or the agony of defeat or like the feeling of like they barely scraped by and how draining this whole experience has been on them. And to see all these characters go through this is like, this is why I like pro wrestling. Like, this is what sports gives you, the reality of, like, a, a, you know, going through a whole season of football, except you actually get access to these people, and, like, they're trying to give you vulnerability as opposed to, in football, no one's going to, they, they're not supposed to, They in theory, they're, they could, but they won't do that, right? Like, to show you, like, what happens to a fighter going through fights, in, in battles and scrapes and all that kind of stuff. Like this is the part of like the character stuff and the storytelling they're giving people. And I think that's why people like that ha- didn't know this is what they, what you can do have enjoyed it so far. It's cause like, yeah, like that's a, that's a cool thing about, about pro wrestling is like, it gives you what boxers or UFC fighters or football players can give you without the, how the front of like, Having to be so macho, they can show you like, the wares of battle. They can show you what's going through their minds. They can show you, give you a glimpse into their disappointment or all that kind of stuff. And I think it's been really cool. So like, I, I wish they, they could spotlight more of that. Uh, but, you know, outside of that, I, no notes. This has been an incredible tournament. The C2, quite frankly, has been a gift from God for this promotion. It's, it's been the best. It's the creative sense of the year for them, easily. This is has been so great and you know one thing that i uh like about it that i did not like originally i think not announcing the matches has actually like kept people engaged in this thing because you're like all right what's gonna be next and then you get the match announcement and the hype just like keeps building there's no like seemingly dead point there are no holes in the bracket i want them to keep it at 12 guys it's got to be kind of prestigious to be in this thing it's like yeah I'm the point you just made about them not announcing. I think, I think that kind of clicks for me as far as because I, you know, you look at the bracket, you're kind of like, okay, what's next? And then you go through the wares and you're like, okay, this has been a good show. This has been a good show. This has been a good show. And it's one thing where like you see the bracket and you're like, all right, even, even when you knew the stuff when you watch it, when you watch a Grand Prix or you watch a, a G1 or even a Carnival and you just know best Super Juniors, you see the slate of all the matches and you're just like, all right, this date one is going to be real serious. Six, everybody, you know, every wrestler that's every wrestler has a match on the card because there's only three matches. Or if you're basically going like, except for that one show when they did, they put a an Andrade match, they could basically put them in a CMLL that same week, this week anyway. Um, it's basically been like, all right, you're getting a Swerve match, you're getting a John Massey match, you're getting a Jay White match. On Collision, you're getting a Danielson match, you're getting an Andrade match, and you're getting a Kingston match. Regardless of whatever it is, that's that's what it is. Um, so like it's it you have somebody in place there that you care about and you or is someone that they're trying to spotlight in in certain position, whatever, regardless. And even the people I didn't mention, the other three people that I didn't mention on each show, like where they get in and where they fit in, it's been fun. And then you see like, oh, it's a crucial this is a crucial, what do you call it? A a high uh high leverage point of the turn of the tournament for like, all right. 
Brody versus Danielson this week. Incredible. They're they're both at the top of the. They're both, you know, they're both have are threats to still get in. So it's like whoever wins, like, is going to actually seem like it could be a lot to get in, right? Like, or that's how I felt, right? So it was it was really cool in that way to see them not announce it. But then like once we basic for me it was like once we got past the week or last week when we got the swerve in in a Moxie match, it was like okay, you already know what we're where we're coming down to. Like you know that like. There's a Danielson and Brody match. You know there's a Danielson and Claudio match. You know that there is a Moxley and Jay White match left, right? You know there is a Roosh and Swerve match left. Like we're getting to nitty gritty, and I don't need no one that's announced, but I know what's coming. And like that was one of that's one of the most fun things about like when you get to like the, the closing stretch of this tournament of these round round terms is like the way they the way you when you don't think about it, like you see you know quality match here, quality match there, and then you look at the end and you're like, oh, like the final stretch is kind of backloaded. Right. And I, I would say the the improvements I would make are like nothing to do with like the actual like tournament itself. It's like everything is on the outside of it. It's like the pageantry side. Like um like we need like props. Like obviously they're giving out the belts and stuff and the belts are gonna be on the line next year and stuff like that. We need a big ass trophy or a flag. We need a press conference, um either a yeah. mid mid tournament press conference or like a pre tournament press conference, the photo shoot. These guys need fucking plaques or whatever, be like, Yeah, I get like you know, I made it into into the tournament or whatever. It's like I was selected for this. And like mm-hmm. we need people like I think like if you're not gonna uphold the legacy they set for this thing, like you don't need to be in the C two. This does not need to expand to a goofy amount of people um, to where because this thing has to fit for TV. Bro. That's the main thing. It needs to fit for TV. In like coming up with that number where you get there's three matches every single week for you to look forward to. That's going to involve this thing and it builds upon each other every single week. That's enough. You can't do four. It's too many because you gotta have a woman because. In theory, you have to have a women's match at some point and a tag match or trios match to make this to justify it, and maybe even a special, you know, tag match to add to, you know, like you'll get a, a title rating defense. or whatever else. Like you'll get like yeah. Orange Cassidy defending against That's Brian what I mean. Keith. You'll get Kenny Omega against uh, Ethan Page uh, mm-hmm. in addition to your other matches. So it's like, right. And then <laughs> look, the guys that get put in that spot, like they're not going to want to come and get shit on the Hangman Page versus Roddy. They're right. not going to want to get shit on by the tournament, so you're going to get four great matches typically right. that on on some of these weeks. Um, right. This thing has been an overwhelming success, and I think a lot of people need to eat fucking crow like that. Yeah. That were saying this thing wasn't going to work. The uh, the the pure elitist that that was holding up the G one. Come come see about it. Come come lay these matches down on paper. There there's uh, no there's no card I, where there there's. One good match and then four sorry ones. There's no Hikaleo in this block. There's no Rich, fucking Sonata. I, like, there's no fucking evil in this thing ruining the tournament. Give me I, I, Jay I, Lethal every day of the week in this thing. The J look the down. Um, the the guys with the with no points have like fucking compelling stories. Briscoe. Mark Briscoe, Daniel right. Garcia, fucking Jay Lethal. Like their whole thing is set up now between them to maybe break Jay Lethal out of that Jarrett shit. Hey, 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 Rich. Hey, Rich. This thing has been phenomenal. Right, Rich. Who like a week or two ago mentioned that like Bristol Lynn has went over Jay over Jay Lethal. You did. Yeah. Hey, me person's watch this watch, you know, uh <laughs> round robin tournaments and see Bro. how this stuff's gonna go. Did Everyone you- most people in these tournaments have Stories Look. and storylines and plot and, and through points throughout the tournament and little that's secret. why it's so awesome and little they're secret stories, stories um, and little <laughs> secret. They're gonna be there's gonna be fallout to this thing too. There are people that have wrestled in this tournament that probably have unfinished business, right? That are gonna see each other down the road, right? James, what what does that sound like? Sounds like story. Yeah, man. Um, sounds like sounds like sounds like pro- programs are being built for the future in the tournament. Like like, like you can watch it's, the, it's, you can it's, watch it's, the Swerve and John Moxley match uh, and the way that match was worked and then the finish. Right. If you if you don't think another match is coming between those guys, right? Yeah, you know, I yeah. I don't know what to tell you. The uh, Jay White about to do this rundown. Like man, I look I I've been flip flopping my pick out here. Like my whole thing was like Kingston Moxley finals. Or whatever, but Moxley beating Swerve has made me think Jay White has made me think Swerve is going to lose the Roosh, 
Swerve's going to be out. Mm-hmm. White is going to beat Mox in essentially they do the, the rematch tiebreaker. at the pay per view. Moxley mm-hmm. beats Jay White. So the the block finals are actually the twenty seventh on Dynamite. So it's not two matches in one night, um, like I assumed or whatever. I I I feel like there's a chance Jay White can go through, and then it's Jay White and Kingston uh, at World's End in New York or whatever. And then, no, wait, it's not. It's not a, there's no semifinals where the top two from each bracket get to. Yes, yes. That that's the block finals. That's next week on Dynamite. Wait, so it's not. So it's not. A situation where they finish the block and then the top two uh, points getters end up facing each other yes. at World's End. No, they're they're not fighting at World's End. They're fighting at Dynamite, and then the finals is at World's End. Okay, okay. Blue gotcha. versus Gold. Okay. So, gotcha. Like, I feel like Kingston's going through. I I haven't seen anything maybe waffle on Kingston, but I feel like it's down to wider mocks. I would be shocked if it went any other direction. So yeah, I'm kind of with you. I think White and Moxley for one. For that's that's gold, right? Or is that blue? Yeah, because white, yeah, uh, gold. Uh, white has to finish right. in front of Swerve because he does not have the tiebreaker. Right. So that's right, what right, makes right, me right. think Swerve's going to lose right. to Roosh. Right, and that gives Roosh his big win of the of the uh, of the tournament because he didn't beat Moxie or Jay White. Um, so, and then in the other bracket, like you have, like obviously Daniels already beat Kingston, so. And then, like, and then you know, Garcia, he's winless. Like, he has in you do the upset of like of Danielson or sorry, not Danielson, but Garcia gets an upset, huge upset over Brody King, um, over Brody King because he upsets the monster, and the monster never goes through ever in these things, uh, or almost never goes through. Uh, so then you have like, so that eliminates uh, Brody. Then you do Danielson and Kingston, the rematch there after Kingston after Danielson beat Kingston and did the whole you know Kingston or Eddie's a bump thing and he have them have their match. Kingston beats him, goes through, and then you do then you do Kingston versus Jay White or Moxley at uh, World's End. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know, like, and, and, like and, you know, and you know, Danielson is politicking for like you know, look, you know, you know, Danielson did not want to beat uh, Brody Brody King. On, on Saturday, the way think how they make kicked out at three point one, and he hit that hit that man with with three Bro, uh, bicycle knees. He let Come that on man, now. he let that man kick out at one of the fucking right. bicycle knee. Yes. Right. Then he had to give him three, and then the third one he kicked at three point one. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. They they say you got to lose. He's like fine, fine, fuck. But um, that man lost. That man, <laughs> that man lost the fucking Mark Briscoe ROH. This is the same weekend. Yeah. And then the world window matches. Yeah, man. At all. This was just such a sensational like tournament, and it's not over. Like, there's still more to come. Um, right. And I think that uh, you know, motherfuckers that act like they couldn't read graphs, uh, that that couldn't uh, add numbers, you know, like they also got to feel it too. So, <laughs> um, 